that time of year again, Bajo, a new Assassin's Creed game for us to prowl around on rooftops in a never-ending quest to overthrow the Templars. This year we'll be free-falling into Victorian-era London. London! Have a cup of tea. I think it's best we leave. What did you do? It's hard to the time for questions. Hex, I know you've always been a huge fan of this series, much more than me. Well, it's evolved into a complex relationship over the years. I love them and I hate them. And if ever a franchise has suffered from oversaturation, it's this one. Yeah, there has been a lot of them. But much to my surprise, Hex, I found this particular Assassin's Creed game totally brilliant. In fact, it might be my favourite yet. Well, after Unity's lacklustre and somewhat broken launch last year, they've certainly had to redeem themselves. And look however you feel about these games. There is something that happens when you're launched into a new historical setting. A new time, a new city. You can't help but be completely drawn into it all over again. Damn it, Ubisoft. Victoria era London has such appeal to me personally. The Industrial Revolution, the colourful language of the NPCs. I may know a thing or two about that splendid fellow you're talking about. What's this? God's sake! Are you trying to blow the gaff? For the first time, the city feels truly alive, not just some giant set piece built for you to parkour around. And I love the variety of the NPCs. There's even children running about, which is really rare for an open world game. What is this place? It's nice to meet you both at last. Yeah, and it looks beautiful, doesn't it? Mm foggy pastel tones, stunning skylines, and while it's no Notre Dame, climbing Big Ben was a great moment. Yeah, and there's just so much detail in these textures. Just look at these rooftops. Look at them. Great tiles. And the winding city streets look great. There's more frames and NPC animations too. And it runs really well on console with massive draw distances. <laughs> I was so impressed, Hex. And London as a city is just so huge, and we've never seen it this vastly laid out in a game before. Well, let's introduce the characters. That's right, characters plural. Because you take control of the extremely deadly Fry twins, Jacob and Evie. Churning seas of London. It's just the way Father described. We won't spend too much time on the story because you know the drill by now. There are pieces of Eden and Templars and they have gangs and you have to stop them. Big move to finally give us a female playable character in a main Assassin's Creed game. I know, and she's awesome. I will come over there and give <laughs> Untie me and then we can parlay, my lady. I'm pressed for time. Tell me now. But what's really cool about this is that you can switch between the two. I really liked this because it helps drive and explain the story without too many side characters who aren't a part of the action. Whitechapel is no longer in the hands of the Blighters. Plus, it's a nice touch that their motivations are a little different. It's a good contrast. London is waiting to be liberated. Forget Crawley. Father would have wanted us to listen. Oh, father. They were touted to have different approaches to combat too, with Evie being stealthier, while Jacob prefers to get his hands dirty the old-fashioned way. <laughs> yeah, but for the most part, I'd say they play fairly similarly, don't you think? Yeah, definitely. The only differentiation seems to be later on in the skill tree, which takes the form of a more traditional RPG now. Eventually, there are certain skills that are only available to Evie in the stealth column, and the same with certain combat abilities for Jacob. Combat is definitely the best we've ever seen it. In the past text, I've always loathed enemy encounters because they just felt a bit awkward and not very intuitive, but in this game, I actually looked forward to them. They're really fun. They're scrappy, but in a good way, with combos, deadly finishes, and guns, which I particularly enjoyed. And I had a great time recruiting a gang and rolling up for a throwdown. Yeah, it's been a bit of a slow process in these games of evolving that combat. 
It's funny to think back to the awkward Renaissance sword play of the earlier games, when what we have now is so swift and so deadly. Get a good combo going and it gets intense. There's a great range of weapons too that make a real difference to how you play. I especially like the stuns of the brass knuckles. hidden sword cane thing is my favorite. Especially when playing with Evie, she's like a whirlwind of death with that thing. I would argue now that the fighting feels so organic that it almost discourages stealth, which for a game about stealth assassinations isn't a great thing. Yeah, but I think the game is better for it. And I found myself still choosing stealth in particular situations where I thought it would work best. Mm, me too. And I like that there are lady thugs now. Follow me down the tracks. Continuing this newfound equality, you'll murder men and women all over town. <laughs> yeah, which raises an interesting point, because that kind of cavalier approach to mass murder is one of my few criticisms of this game. You kill a lot of people, like huge quantities of goons and sometimes even policemen who are just doing their job. And this is all in the first hour of the game. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could argue that they're all corrupt and will kill you if you don't kill them, but it does get pretty confronting. Yeah, and I think my biggest problem is they just seem like regular shady dudes. Sure, of course child labor is bad and these guys aren't nice people. But does that give me a free pass for mass murder? Something to think about. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice if it were easier to play this more passively, just knock people out and move on. Yeah, like Batman. Yes. <laughs> well, let's talk about some of the other features. Similar to Unity, stealth is no longer about blending or hiding in bushes, but a more traditional cover system. I really like this animation they do when they're going in and out of stealth mode. It's totally ridiculous, though. I mean, how much more conspicuous do you look just running around with a hood over your head? <laughs> True, but I, mean, I liked it anyway as a gamey device. You can also get around the city in a horse and cart, which is great fun. <laughs> it literally is ye olde GTA. You just hijack vehicles and tear through the streets, destroying everything in your path. Yeah, there's even a boost button, and you know what that means, Hex? It's time to pump ye olde NOS. You're relentless. I'm not a good carriage driver. <laughs> it's fun and arcadey though. The carriages have been nicely gamified to take loads of damage. Plus, apart from being a cool, speedy way to get around this enormous city, they've been incorporated well into the missions also. While you do have your standard Templar hunts and free the prisoners objectives, hush now. Don't worry. You'll also be tasked with kidnapping targets and shoving them into a carriage to be sent off for interrogation or some particular kind of justice. It's a nice new dimension, doesn't it? Because you have to tactfully clear an area without spooking your target. But when it comes time for the kidnap, there can't be any enemy stragglers or you'll be interrupted and the whole operation goes bust. Someone! This crazy woman is after me! Let's talk about the new grapple. You love a good grapple, don't you? Oh, yes. And I have to say, it's completely transformed the Assassin's Creed experience for me. It's not a completely free system, you can't grapple everything, but it's generally there when you need it. And zip lining in and out of fights is just so satisfying. Yeah, I like that it creates new assassination opportunities too, because normally to air assassinate you need to be directly above the target, usually on a ledge. But now with the zip line, you can create new aerial pathways to drop down from. Brilliant! The animations are nicely detailed for slinging about too. And I like how you have to work a bit harder when ziplining upwards. Yeah, and can we also talk about the fact that your assassin's hideout this time is a moving train? I mean, how cool is that? Yeah, it's awesome. It literally just chugs around the city in a loop, so you can ride it to places you haven't travelled to yet and hop off whenever you feel like. And what a great way to see the city and appreciate all of that wonderful detail. It's such an inspired idea, I loved it. From your train, you access missions and collect cash, and of course you can fast travel to it at any point, which is great. Speaking of trains, I love all those big action set pieces. Those fights that take place on top of trains. Kicking people off train sex is my new favourite thing. Yeah, not to mention the River Thames is a whole separate area of goons and corruption that needs to be conquered. Boats travel up and down the river, making for a kind of moving parkour situation and creating exciting chase scenarios. 
I think it all plays into what you were saying earlier about the city feeling less like it was obviously designed for free running. I, mean, I think that is this game's greatest achievement, and it's owed greatly to those living river moments, and the fact that London's streets are so much wider to allow for horses and carriages. So to accommodate that, the fact that you can zip line your way around gives you so much more freedom and opportunity. Yeah, you see far less of those obvious ramps and staged climbing areas, it just feels more real. And while I know that climbing to the top of towers and churches is a hallmark staple for these games, I personally find it such a relief that I can just zip to the top in a second now. This city is huge and I do not have time to muck around. <laughs> the controls keep improving with this series as well, although I did find after a while I started to get that right trigger hand cramp. You just have to hold that right trigger down so much. <laughs> We should also mention that there's no multiplayer this time around. How do you feel about that, Hex? Do you miss it? You know what? I do. It, and it wasn't until Unity's multiplayer was finally working that I actually started to really enjoy the co-op stuff, you know? Both of us running together across the Notre Dame. Like, that was really cool. Yeah, that was really fun. I don't know. I don't really miss it that much, though, to be honest. And I certainly don't miss the versus multiplayer modes that was in some of the other games because it just didn't really do anything for me. It's a bit of a one-time affair. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, you know, all in all, it does sound like you're enjoying this Assassin's Creed as much as I am. In fact, I'm just so happy to be sitting here loving an Assassin's Creed game again. Yeah, I had a great time with this. In fact, I would put it in the top three greatest Assassin's Creed games ever, next to AC2 and Black Flag, of course. However, I do go through this same process every year, where I dread picking it up, then when I do I get all overwhelmed and inspired by the new setting and the features and I fall in love with it, then I settle into this kind of hypnotic grinding groove and it all starts to feel the same anyway. And maybe it's because I haven't spent as many hours as you have in this franchise that I haven't quite hit that jaded point yet. Probably, and I think that's a valid point to make. I mean, for newcomers, you will be blown away by this. For fans, this is one of the greatest Assassin's Creed games that I've ever played. This is one of the most vibrant and exciting cities I've ever been in. But am I going to finish it? Probably not. Oh, really? That's so unfortunate. I think the series has just hit its peak. They've finally perfected the formula and done away with a lot of the problematic and tedious elements. It's just so good now. Well, I think for me it comes down to the repetitive nature of the missions. I still look at that enormous map with X amount of bounty missions and X amount of Templar hunts and lists of things to collect. And I, I honestly just feel exhausted. I mean, give me this incredible city, this open world to explore, but don't give me the same list of chores to complete, man. Yeah, fair enough. But what are you gonna give it overall, Hex? Well, in spite of my jaded disposition, this is still an amazing game, so I'm giving it four. I loved it. I'm giving it four and a half. Oh, uh, I was toying with this device and have noted down the formula for you. It, it's not perfect yet, but by golly, it works.